But when a deep consideration had from the secret bottom of my soul drawn together and heaped up all my misery in the sight of my heart, there arose a mighty storm, bringing a mighty shower of tears, which that I might pour forth wholly in its natural expressions. I rose from Olympias. Solitude was suggested to me as fitter for the business of weeping. So I retired so far that even his presence could not be a burden to me. Thus was it then with me, and he perceived something of it. For something, I suppose, had spoken, wherein the tones of my voice appeared choked with weeping, and so had risen up. He then remained where we were sitting, most extremely astonished. I cast myself down, I know not how, under a certain fig tree, giving full vent to my tears. And the floods of mine eyes gushed out, an acceptable sacrifice to thee. And not indeed in these words, yet to this purpose, spake I much unto thee. And thou, O Lord, how long, how long, Lord, wilt thou be angry forever? Remember not our former iniquities, for I felt that I was held by them. I sent up these sorrowful words, How long? How long? Tomorrow and tomorrow? Why not now? Why not is there this hour an end to my uncleanliness? So was I speaking and weeping in the most bitter contrition of my heart, when lo, I heard from a neighboring house a voice, as of a boy or girl I know not, chanting and oft repeating, Take up and read, take up and read. Instantly my countenance altered. I began to think most intently whether children were wont in any kind of play to sing such words, nor could I remember ever to have heard the like. So checking the torrent of my tears, I rose, interpreting it to be no other than a command from God to open the book and to read the first chapter I should find. For I had heard of Antony that coming in during the reading of the gospel, he received the admonition as if it was being read, was spoken to him. Go, sell all that thou hast, and give it to the poor, and thou shalt have treasure in heaven, and come, and follow me. And by such oracle he was forthwith converted unto thee. Eagerly then I returned to the place where Olympias was sitting, for there had I laid the volume of the apostle when I arose thence. I seized, opened, and in silence read that section on which my eyes first fell. Not in rioting and drunkenness, not in chambering and wantonness, not in strife and envy, but put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ, and make not provision for the flesh. No further would I read, nor needed I, for instantly at the end of the sentence, by a light as it were a serenity infused into my heart, all the darkness of doubt vanished away. Then, putting my finger between or some other mark, I shut the volume, and with a calmed countenance made it known to Olympias. And what was wrought in him which I knew not, he thus showed me. He asked to see what I had read. I showed him and he looked even further than I had read, and I knew not what followed. This followed. Him that is weak in the faith, receive, which he applied to himself and disclosed to me. And by this admonition was he strengthened, and by a good resolution and purpose, and most corresponding to his character, wherein he did always very far differ from me for the better, Without any turbulent delay, he joined me. Thence we go into my mother. We tell her. She rejoiceth. We relate in order how it took place. She leaps for joy and triumphant, and blesseth thee. 
who art able to do above that which we ask or think. For she perceived that thou hadst given her more for me than she was wont to beg by her pitiful and most sorrowful groanings. For thou convertest me unto thyself, so that I sought neither wife nor any hope of this world, standing in that rule of faith, where thou hadst showed me unto her in a vision so many years before. And thou didst convert her mornings into joy, much more plentiful than she had desired, and in a much more precious and pure way than she erst required, by having grandchildren of my body. O Lord, I am thy servant. I am thy servant and the son of thy handmaid. Thou hast broken my bonds and sunder. I will offer to thee the sacrifice of praise. Let my heart and my tongue praise thee. Yea, let all my bones say, O Lord, who is like unto thee? Let them say and answer thou me, and say unto my soul, I am thy salvation. Who am I, and what am I? What evil have not been either my deeds, or if not my deeds, my words, or if not my words, my will? But thou, O Lord, art good and merciful, and thy right hand had respect unto the depth of my death, and from the bottom of my heart emptied that abyss of corruption. And this thy whole gift was, to kneel what I willed, and to will what thou willst. But where through all those years, and out of what low and deep recess was my free will called forth in a moment, whereby to submit my neck to thy easy yoke, and my shoulders unto thy light burthen, O Christ Jesus, my helper and my redeemer, how sweet did it at once become to me to want the sweetness of those toys. And what I feared to be parted from was now a joy to part with. For thou didst cast them forth from me, thou true and highest sweetness. Thou castest them forth, and for them enteredst in thyself, sweeter than all pleasure, though not to flesh and blood, brighter than all light, but more hidden than all depths, higher than all honor, but not to the high in their own conceits. Now was my soul free from the biting cares of canvassing and getting, and weltering in filth, and scratching off the itch of lust. And my infant tongue spake freely to thee, my brightness, and my riches, and my health, the Lord my God. Thou hadst pierced our hearts with thy charity, and we carry thy words, as it were fixed, in our entrails, and the examples of thy servants, whom for black thou hadst made bright, and for dead alive, being piled together in the receptacle of our thoughts, kindled and burned up, that our heavy torpor, that we should not seek down to the abyss. And they fired us so vehemently, that all the blast of subtle tongues from gainsayers might only inflame us the more fiercely, not extinguish us. Nevertheless, because for thy name's sake, which thou hast hollowed throughout the earth, this our vow and purpose might also find some to commend it. It seemed like ostination not to wait for the vacation now so near, but to quit beforehand a public profession which was before the eyes of all, so that all looking on this act of mine and observing how near was the time of vintage which I wished to anticipate, would talk much of me as if I had desired to appear some great one, and what end it had served me that people should repute and dispute upon my purpose, and that our good should be evil spoken of? Oh, in what accents spake I unto thee, my God, when I read the psalms of David, those faithful songs, and sounds of devotion which allow of no swelling spirit, as yet a catechumen, and a novice in thy real love, resting in that villa, 
with Olypus, a catechumen, my mother cleaving to us, in female garb with masculine faith, with the tranquility of age, motherly love, Christian piety. Oh, what accents did I utter unto thee in those psalms, and how was I by them kindled towards thee, and on fire to rehearse them, if possible, through the whole of the world, against the pride of mankind. And yet they are sung through the whole world, nor can any hide themselves from thy heat. With what vehement and bitter sorrow was I angered at the Manichees, and again I pitied them, for that they knew not those sacraments, those medicines, and were mad against the antidote, which might have recovered them of their madness. How I would they had been somewhere near me, and without my knowing that they were there, could have beheld my countenance, and heard my words, when I read the fourth psalm in that time of my rest, and how that psalm wrought upon me. When I called, the God of my righteousness heard me, in tribulation thou enlarged me. Have mercy upon me, O Lord, and hear my prayer. Would that what I uttered on these words they could hear, without my knowing whether they heard, lest they should think I spake it for their sakes. Because in truth neither should I speak the same things, nor in the same way, if I perceived that they heard and saw me. Nor if I spake them would they so receive them, as when I spake by and for myself before thee, out of the natural feelings of my soul. I trembled for fear, and again kindled with hope, and with rejoicing in thy mercy, O Father. And all issued forth, both mine eyes and voice, when thy good spirit, turning unto us, said, O ye sons of men, how long slow of heart! Why do ye love vanity, and seek after leasing? For I had loved vanity, and sought after leasing. And thou, O Lord, hast already magnified thy Holy One, raising him from the dead, and setting him at thy right hand, whence from on high he should send his promise, the Comforter, the Spirit of Truth. And he had already sent him, but I knew it not. He had sent him, because he was now magnified, rising again from the dead, and ascending into heaven. For till then the Spirit was not yet given, because Jesus was not yet glorified. And the prophet cries out, How long, slow of heart, why do ye love vanity, and seek after leasing? Know this, that the Lord hath magnified his Holy One. He cries out, How long? He cries out, Know this, and I so long, not knowing loved vanity, and sought after leasing. And therefore I heard and trembled, because it was spoken unto such as I remembered myself to have been. For in those phantoms which I had held for trues was their vanity and leasing. And I spake aloud many things earnestly and forcibly in the bitterness of my remembrance. Which would they had heard, who yet love vanity and seek after leasing? They would perchance have been troubled, and have vomited it up. And thou wouldst hear them when they cried unto thee. For by a true death in the flesh did he die for us, who now intercedeth unto thee for us.